Okay, so we have recognized that there are a few issues, and uh, th this is like worthwhile uh, um, to make us aware that there are options that we can pick for different uh, uh, tailored situations that are specific to the industry sector, company, business unit, and project. Yeah. So how, how can we do that? Uh, um, normally, uh, learning in a particular context or, or um, social technical environment makes it incredibly difficult to, to think actually, uh, there are phrases like uh, thinking outside of the box, but if, if you're in design, you, you realize that you just need a bigger box, not outside of the box like that. So um, the, the metaphor really being that it's incredibly difficult to, to come up with alternative ways if you are kind of conditioned on a particular environment. This is why actually uh, um, scholarly activity is such a driver. So know the literature, what are options from literature? How can I use it? How can I actually check if this is feasible or, or interesting to my environment? Yeah, and uh, um, is it clearly articulated? Does it make sense? Or are there things that you can't really see through? Is it methodologically sound or is it just an opinion? And then project management, if, if you go to things like the World Congress of Project Management, I go there as well every year, there, there are a lot of passionate project managers that think that they have found the way, that they found the way of managing projects. And uh, they come normally from very shiny project companies. Uh, uh, you know, like you name it, it's everybody, like NASA, it's uh, um, Oshie, it's uh, um, World Bank. There, there are a lot of passionate individuals as project managers. And quite rightly, they are proud of their achievements. But uh, a lot of the methods that they are presenting there um, are very much tailored to them. Yeah? And, and this is often a danger. Uh, uh, what works for one may not actually uh, work for you. Yeah? So um, that, that is important to recognize. And finding the way that works for you is, of course, a, a key thing. Yeah? So it has to be theoretically grounded to a degree, yeah? that, that it's authentic. And uh, uh, respect the data. Yeah? It's, it's, uh, we have uh, an enormous problem in, in uh, project management. We will cover that actually in a whole session. We have a lot of biases. Uh, uh, a few of the biases are kind of uh, professionally needed, yeah, because otherwise, if, uh, if, if we would be uh, very pessimistic, uh, you, you would hardly been one project back, yeah, what I'm saying. And so there is as well uh, um, a certain uh, healthy bias in project management that is needed to actually go on a risky endeavor of doing a project. Um, then there, there has to be a certain element of scrupulousness. Uh, um, we come to that later as well. And of course, it has to be rigor, good rigorous, yeah, which means it has to be thoroughly researched and it has to be uh, um, something that has uh, uh, multiple tests. And last but not least, it has, of course, to be relevant to you. Uh, this is very important. So, with this in mind, uh, um, you, you kind of come. To, to a solution package that we have to cover. And uh, what one is teaching, you know, so it has to be uh, multidisciplinary, that there's no way around it. And actually, I, I'll tell you in a second what keywords are for the literature. So in a way, if you research the history there, you, you have covered everything, but uh, um, there's another hidden dimension. It's kind of the different disciplines that have actually had their influence from universities, research, as well practitioners, what companies were interested in. Then uh, there, there's a multi-sector uh, uh, notion yeah, to learn from uh, some industries or sectors that are driven in their ways. Uh, and it's useful to look at other ones and look why, why do they do it differently and what, what is maybe adaptable to ours. Yeah? So we have many case studies that actually have made use of that. Yeah. And then it has to be, uh, this is a divide that I don't like, but you will find it in, in the literature over and over again, practical but theoretical which kind of distinguishes uh, practical from theoretical. I mean, practical, you have theories too, right? It's just that they're not written in, in journal papers. Maybe they are not written in journal papers, yeah, but uh, that's the difference. But then you, you have, of course, research relevance, value, and impact. Uh, um, this is an interesting one for, for us here uh, in particular. And then we have the knowledge transfer that goes both ways. Your knowledge that, that I hopefully get an insight in, and then, uh, at the same time, I hope to share my insights that I've gained over the years. So, um, the role of the professions in higher university or higher education institutions, and vice versa, 
is this contested? Yeah, you will see that uh, um, everywhere. The professional bodies uh, um, have created now their own qualifications. And uh, um, they are they lobby for them. Yeah? So don't, don't get me wrong, there is a certain contest, but it's, it's unhealthy. Yeah? The, uh, this is normally quite bad. So scientifically, here, here's a background. Ontologically, uh, this is, uh, well, what does ontologically mean? It's a weird term, isn't it? It looks like something is missing. It looks like biology, but clearly it's bond. Yeah, so what onto? <coughs> does anybody know? I, I take guesses as well, so. It's uh, implicit what we are doing, yeah? So, uh, um, yeah, we, we, we fight with that when we come to the MSC dissertation. You will have to write a small <coughs> section on that. Yeah, it's, it's literally our reality, what we perceive as being able to do, what we are aware, what we may not be aware of. <coughs> What, what we can say, we know that is actually the next one. Uh, so that, that is the epistemology. I'll talk you quickly through. The ontology is the scope, what we are consciously aware, what we are filtering for. Yeah? This is project management and P3M, maybe the project management office, yeah, the, where, where we are based, maybe where we go on site, on, on where things are happening, or where we negotiate things. And then the management of projects, yeah, this is what we do. Then we, we follow through the processes, technology, commercial strategy. We deal with the people, you know, there are implicit notions to that. Then epistemology, what, what we can say we know, uh, it's theoretically uh, aware of properly researched stuff. Uh, so here again, normative tendencies, uh, being aware what behaviors around you may look like, what a healthy remit is, what an unhealthy uh, remit is. So uh, the more, most drastically, uh, my colleague from Oxford, I it's actually Danish, but uh, um, then uh, Friedberg uh, uh, pointed out that uh, um, there's on one side the guy that, that helps you of, out of pure uh, unhappiness, and then there's the one that pretends to help you and steals everything that he can get there. So um, there, there is a fine line between those uh, notions. And uh, um, so behavior is an is a interesting thing to us as project managers. Then, so instrumental rationality is an interesting one too. Yeah? It can be instrumental, it can be ill, well, can be very strange for other people yeah? that, that are maybe not in that uh, particular project setting. And again, the context social technical, we have that already, and theory based, empirically evidenced. Yeah? So we, we do like philosophy, I like philosophy a lot, yeah? but. Uh, um, in project management, we subscribe to Empirie. So we have tested it, we looked at it. We, we gave it a try and saw the alternative chances, and, and that was it. And scholarly base. Last but not least, methodology has to be relevant, rigor, and impact with this uh, impact. So it, it's really the question of focus on the 21st century. We, we have a lot of new tools, and uh, we, we can, it's really partly up to you to introduce them to the world. Now, there's a lot out there that is new now. We can now kind of refine, look into things. Uh, if, if you work with project, uh, Google has like a wonderful project management office, they, they call it something else. And uh, they, they have like kind of full information, which is kind of terrifying. Yeah? So you do know who works on the project and who does other stuff. But uh, um, uh, there, there are as well a lot of shiny things. Yeah? So, they use as well Scrum, like backup models, yeah, where when somebody works on it and a friend has looked into their project, then they can become like a contributor. Yeah? So it's a very uh, communal-based project management process, fascinating. Yeah? And clearly superior to uh, old models that we have. Yeah? They, they are very, very quick with projects. So uh, this, this is, uh, oh, I should have, now I'm disappointed with a picture. It's 21st century. It's, uh, one, one more, okay. No, that's, uh, um, that's technology. So, um, what are the key uh, uh, contributions? I have to admit that my, my uh, lecture series kind of starts in the 60s. I have not really picked up a lot of tools before that, mostly because you're likely to have covered them already. So, uh, operational research is a little bit a part of it. Then we have system analysis, scheduling, resources, allocation. I kind of hint towards it, but we, we don't practice it. And so if you're interested in those scheduling tools, we have licenses for it. Let me know you can practice with them. And I can give you recommendations on that. I even have like podcast videos uh, that, that I did with a colleague together for a local company. So if, if you're interested in things like that, 
you, you can do that too, but this is like extra syllabus. But uh, on where we actually come in is success and failure studies, then new product development, we look a little bit at knowledge management, social science reflections, and, uh, oh, I have not updated, this is okay. Then uh, not technology based, uh, um, so we, we don't actually go into actual engineering, expected uh, um, NPD or, or ICT is not really there. Yeah, so we have there no, no baseline, we recover it as a, managerial consultancy base, uh, if, if you want, yeah? and then we don't go particular disciplines and look at programming or, or statistical mapping. Yeah? So you do a little bit of statistics with David Beanie and Alan or Osborne, if you, if you accept module two uh, and research methods, but uh, that's another story. Yeah? Then, uh, of course, risk and value, uh, la largely with Claudio, I touch on it, yeah? because I, I want to give you a particular quality spin I want to show you that uh, it matters very much what project framework you're using. I compare Scrum with uh, um, Prince 2. Uh, those are two interesting ones because value becomes a very different notion. And I want to discuss as well what you think value is. Mm. Yeah, but with a, a project framework, you determine as well what value actually means to the system, yeah, what you're being rewarded against. And of course, benefits. And it should really read value benefits, then maybe uh, um, yeah, we, we could go with project legacy. Yeah? So there, there is a certain notion of success. Yeah? So and with risk, you always have gambling. Yeah? So this is where the opportunity game and projects, we have said a lot, by the way. Yeah? Uh, uh, which means uh, it's, it's good to understand the treasure hunt. Yeah? If, if you want to read about this, I, I recommend reading the memoirs of uh, Columbus. He had just understood a lot of this. Uh, project methodology-wise, very deep reading for this. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful book, actually. And then, of course, procurement. I, I don't have any pre-expectations there. Either we recover the benefits there, yeah. uh, the, the basics there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is it. Yeah, this is uh, um, an area and, and keywords mapped out in a matrix over the years, yeah, where we are roughly. Uh, more recently, we have project legacy. We fight a little bit as well with fuzzy logics with portfolios. Uh, I've given you as well the authors here, so you can look them up. But it's a joke. Uh, it's, it's just something that I've done uh, in the past for a journal. I, I was a reviewer on the project <coughs> journal, and uh, we kind of tried to map what areas we, we need developing, and uh, so this is where this is coming from. And uh, um, yeah, you can see they, they have like different origins. It starts really off with the um, ones that are named uh, operational research system tools, industrial relations, organization and people, and you, you see we, we move more and more to uh, even educating clients, major project, project legacy, those are new topics that pop up in between. Uh, when, when you look at those educating the clients, it's nearly society that becomes a topic. Uh, how do our projects impact on society? I was made up ma major project. Uh, there's probably a bubble here that thinks about sustainability, maybe even. And project legacy then would belong there too. Yeah? So th this is actually quite interesting. So, yeah, I have a few pictures uh, that, that go along the history. This is a um, bridge uh, at, at Perth over the Tay. Uh, arguably, this is accounted uh, um, to uh, Brindley, uh, Smitten, and Rennie. And uh, um, they, they were the first really of doing a bridge between uh, um, a village and marketplace, uh, um, uh, replacing the ferries, realizing that uh, it was actually more important to manage kind of the people and the opinion of the bridge. Yeah? The ferry people lobbied against the bridge. We don't need a bridge. We have the ferries. What do we need the, a bridge for? Uh, so they, they realized very quickly that it's not just about the construction of project. That you, that you have to make it uh, settle in as well. But it was as well that they needed the tax from, from the local village yeah, to actually pay for the bridge, to, to pay the stonemasons. Yeah. So um, I have here a few ones. Gunshot, yeah, this is really kind of 1917, uh, Henry Gunt. Yeah, um, then uh, other ones uh, I've really picked here randomly. This was a uh, prop and gamble in the 20s. They realized that uh, you can actually. Um, take products and uh, make brand management with them. It's incredibly powerful. You create a buy-in into your project that you're doing. Yeah? So a very strong binding element. It's identification, yeah? 
internalization is the next one that the sociologist would say. But if you identify, you, you are already half in it. Yeah? Then we, we had this well, um, the um, oh, which one was it? Uh, I have to admit that there are a few pictures missing, which I, I think have disappeared because of copyright. You know, but when my team like did this, so they just didn't need everything that hasn't got copyright. So I, I think this is really the oil crisis one of the early 1970s. And there are probably seven pictures missing in between, so we are already in the <coughs> 70s now. And, and that was uh, um, the uh, consideration uh, of, of pipelines having an impact um, on Alaska. And so this, in the 70s, we realized the first time that our methods, even if we, are, uh, uh, if we trust in them in other environments, in uh, particular habitats, uh, where they have a different impact. So for those project managers, the normal oil project, or oil drill project, uh, became actually an environmental uh, um, uh, project too. Yeah? So there were a lot of new legislations being written at that time. Yeah? And, oh, that's, that's again the controversial pictures that have survived. So, um, which one was that? This is a big one. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm in between. Is this a satellite or, or is this a, is that the missile crisis? This is a 50-50, isn't it? It's a missile. It's a missile, yeah. <laughs> okay, th thank you for following me on that. You can see I'm, I don't know the tools anymore. Yeah? It's, it's very sad. But uh, um, yeah, so the, 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 the other lesson is don't let somebody else change your slides before you give uh, uh, the, the PowerPoint. But uh, um, in that case, uh, it was actually, the, the missile uh, um, was counted for matrix organization. Who would have thought? You know? So the idea of a matrix organization came uh, basically with this project. Because they realized they had to collaborate across, and that, that is whom we uh, um, uh, have to thank for now for, for the missile crisis. Who would have thought? And uh, the, uh, um, then the space shuttle, uh, uh, which one was it? Oh, this is the first expert system. Yeah? So, um, so recruitment really experts into a project, working with university. Yeah? So um, your team not just coming from the workers around you, but really for your project bringing in experts. So this is uh, the first accounted project on that account, at least in literature. And uh, Olympics, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, we, we have missed like 14 pictures, but hey. It's, uh, um, this is really, uh, um, they, they lobbied basically for the certification of project managers. Yeah? So you, you are safe with the MSC from Northumbria. We are credited uh, with a major project association. Uh, this is something that is probably, if, if you uh, work on really big projects, this will be very beneficial for you. For the rest, it's just a wonderful thing that you can put on the CV if you want. But uh, um, they, they requested that, that there's an awareness of um, managing major and uh, mega projects and all their project managers on those projects were certified at some point or internally certified that there were a few companies that uh, um, signed up to become a training company too so for large companies that makes sense actually Skanska was one and Buffer Beatty signed as well up for, for the whole program and trained themselves uh, internally yeah and then I mean, we had to throw the space dive, uh, uh, and then we come back to that because uh, that, this project is fascinating. What, why, why did we do this? Does anybody know? Advertisement. Advertisement. You are like basically professors around the world. Uh, it's the same discussion. I could believe. The, uh, the, the, who, who sponsored this initially? Do, do you know this? Red Bull was another company? But, but there were many actually, yeah, this is unfair. But uh, um, this is actually the space suit that is your safety jacket for the galaxy flights into space. So if, if you, we can, like we, we basically have Virgin Galaxy at the moment, they try to commercialize uh, um, space travel. Uh, so instead of flying to, to your holiday place, uh, flying to Euro Disney, you, you, you uh, basically, with Virgin Galaxy, you fly to space. Something goes wrong, your pilot had, did get a drunk, so you had a uh, satellite crash. Then instead of the vest under your seat, you have that. 
And the idea is to spray stuff back. Huh? Yeah. So uh, it, it's quite exciting. <laughs> I'm not ambitious in the tree. But uh, this was the initial project, yeah? But no, nobody knows it for this, yeah? So it, it's quite interesting. <laughs> but uh, it, it's brilliant because this project was part funded by NASA, and in the end, it was completely funded from uh, a fizzy drink company, Red Bull, yeah, because they saw it as an extreme marketing uh, uh, gig, uh, which, which is fascinating. So uh, as a project manager, you, you had no budget issues. Yeah? You, you went on a ride with Red Bull. Actually, it was quite a ride. The Red Bull, uh, there, there were a lot of issues, actually. But then, not nonetheless, OK. So this, this was something about uh, our finance. Yeah? Uh, we will come to that later in the session. So the, the, the common theme really, optimization, success, continuity, <coughs> process, behavioral, <coughs> marketing, relational, yeah, building a relation with marketing, uh, decision making, modeling, and governance, those are kind of the, the dominant themes. If you look across the years, uh, or the last 60 years if you want, and uh, uh, more recently, this is what we do now. This is actually, I had my birthday uh, last November, so 20, uh, 20, oh, I have to be careful. Is this the work thing? Yeah, okay, anyway. End of November last year, we, uh, we, we met. This is like a, a world conference of project management. It's the first conference that we had. And this is what we did. Yeah, this is what academics do. The tank, uh, just to give you an idea, the land behind it, yeah, the map is really Switzerland. It's Zurich. Yeah? I think it's Zurich. I think it's written. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, I think it's Switzerland. But anyway, the idea was, can you read this? Uh, um, to, to map out what are the current areas uh, um, that we find project managers actually do. <coughs> and there, there were different companies that hosted that, and uh, we then like basically did like a brainstorming and came along with our topics, and then showed which are critical. Yeah, so really bad is red. Wait, where, where's my? This is uh, frequent problems uh, in project. Yeah? Red is very problematic. Then uh, um, black, uh, a black bomb. Uh, this is a, this is a, um, I don't know even if you know this anymore. There was a cowboy thing. They, they had bombs like that. Yeah? So this is supposed to be a bomb. If, if you are from any kind of like uh, um, explosive background, yeah, materials, you will be disappointed with this bomb. But uh, nonetheless, so uh, this is basically the, the bomb. And uh, this, the, the black one, the black bomb is like strong impact. Yeah, then if you look at that, uh, yeah, you will be surprised where that actually is. Yeah, and, and especially if you go on the larger projects, it's, it's really surprising where the explosives are. Yeah, because it's not where you think it is. So first of all, we have a little bit since. Here we have quality, costs, and schedule. And uh, um, because every country, what, what is the term for this triangle? What do you call it? Iron triangle. Iron, yeah, this is good. Where, where was it? Where did you hear this? Yeah? Yeah. Here, 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 people. Here, so here in the UK? No, no, no. Where, where did you read it? Do you remember? Which place was it? PMP book. It's in a PMP book tradition. Okay. But uh, in which place did you read the book? I have it here. Okay, okay. So it's, it's probably British literature. Uh, I just wanted to, I was curious about the region. Well, did you have another name for this? It's in the Harvey Miller book. Oh, it's not my best. I'm not promoting books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Avi Mela. Yeah, he, he says it's Iron Triangle. Are, are there any others? Triple constraint. Yeah. What is that? There was another name for it, like triple constraint. Triple constraint is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can. There, there are quite a few. There's Golden Triangle. There's Bermuda Triangle. It's very popular in America. Didn't catch on here. So uh, um, we, we called it the magic triangle because we had one guy uh, from Japan there and he didn't really get it. So he was like, what, what are you on about? I don't try and that doesn't make any sense. So, uh, and, uh, um, so now it's the magic triangle. Yeah? So we, we, we write a book to make it catch on. Yeah? So this is our idea. Uh, the, uh, um, no, I mean, we, we just like <coughs> this up there, so don't take it too serious. But uh, not, nonetheless, the triangle is a quality cost and schedule. Not really an issue. This is surprising, right? I thought this is where all the crooks is. This is what project managers are evaluated on, to a degree. But in reality, it's a change management. Scope management, yeah, expectations change. The client sees something building, 
markets change, expectations change. And, and here with it, this is the explosive stuff, yeah? Stakeholder management, yeah? Risk and opportunities. Opportunities. Uh, the, uh, the, my, my favorite one is uh, we, we, had a, we, we had a hospital that has special doors, and uh, this is hilarious. Uh, there was an internship student, I won't tell you what his profession was, but he said, like, why are the doors so expensive? I know a door maker, you can get it for, I think, it was 0.5% of the price. And the project management team didn't think this through. And they, they basically said yes, but it never made it good for There was a checkup before. But it would have saved a lot of money, basically. And, and they just saw the opportunity and saw that they saved a lot of money. But of course, in hospitals, the uh, doors are purpose designed, some of them, not all, but uh, a lot of them. Yeah. So opportunities harvest like something in us that can carry us down the wrong routes. Yeah? So there, there's a lot of potential here. Then integration management, of course, control and reporting, yeah? or not reporting. Then we, we have another triangle that, that, is, uh, um, that is the cause, of course, of friction. Yeah? So uh, here you have the project resources, project organization with structures of organization or surrounding organization. If you are embedded in a public organization and you are the project manager, you fight most likely with the line manager for the same resources always exciting. Yeah? So uh, a lot of potential to go things wrong. Uh, um, diplomacy and uh, negotiations, key skill. Then uh, um, here we have as well the strategic organization context. We have the strategy, culture, yeah? with the structure, and strategy, another hot pot for potential disaster. Yeah? And then you have, of course, programs and portfolios aligning. Yeah, the, my, my favorite project that I ever I had a project that uh, I was really thrilled to do, and on Monday I turned up for the project, and I had been pulled because it was not part of our portfolio anymore. So that, that was the quickest project <coughs> I've ever like, started, and, and it was uh, determined straight afterwards. But uh, as a program, the portfolios impact on a project manager, and it's normally cyclical, you know, whenever they get reviewed. So this is a really weird thing. And then you, you have, of course, uh, business and infrastructure technology that, that sits as well here in the strategic organization context. So those are uh, um, the, the uh, um, uh, harder elements, if you want. Then you have the social world, with leadership, teamwork, cultural awareness, negotiation, interpersonal communication, conflict and crisis. And then you, you come to the personal world. Here it gets very touchy. Yeah, depending on what culture you are in, you think this is uh, um, Something that maybe the company should get involved, should get involved, should the project manager even get involved. So it's engagement, uh, appearance of engagement. Yeah. Then re results orientation, self-reflection, self-control, values, appreciation, integrity, and so forth. Yeah. And uh, th this is really kind of like all under personal and social world, if, if you want. Yeah. And those are constraints. Okay. And then, then we have this fine line where you are at the moment. Yeah? This is, of course, the harbor, the project management research, but we have as well the coaching, uh, um, then PL knowledge exchange, further education, self-study. Be, be careful, um, this is like Europeans using further education. So this means continuous study that has nothing to do with further education, if that makes sense. Yeah? So uh, we have a different understanding in Europe as in the UK. Uh, PM certification. Here, yeah, and basic training, and then examples and idols. Yeah, so, um, and idols uh, um, are as well out on the waters because it can be misleading as well. Yeah, so. Okay, so this is a, a, a practical world. This is what we find. And uh, there, there was uh, um, the theory that we cover. This is why it's multidisciplinary. So we, we grasp here from, uh, I won't read it out the world. It's uh, psychology, sociology, then we have a little bit of ethics in it. Economy uh, or economics, then we have as well quite a bit on, on uh, pedagogic studies, really, that, that uh, links here into. And so, this is kind of the theory that we use to make sense and ground it. Yeah? So, uh, I have set as well in pictures for you to read up. Yeah. Any questions to the pretty pictures? So, th this is what we are all covering. Yeah. How is the placement of the things related to the map of theory? So this and this? Yeah, why, why did you place the blue stuff there? And 
Why, why is there this river mouse running in between? Yeah? Why is it divided? Is that the question? No, I, mean, I don't understand why you put all these things on the map. <laughs> Couldn't you use just a plain sheet of paper? Like yeah, it, it could have. <laughs> 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 this is a good question. My voice is going. I have to be careful now. But uh, uh, it, it was literally the divide of academia meets practice. <coughs> so this was the idea. So it, it was.